This is One on One. Brought to you by the North Ward Center. We're pleased to welcome Michael Markman, who is an art teacher in K to 8th grade at uh, the Dr. Michael Conti School in Jersey City and the CEO of Markman Design. How are you doing? It's all well. Good, good. This is part of our classroom close-up uh, initiative we do in cooperation with the uh, New Jersey Education Association. We're about to see a clip that tells a powerful story about you. When did you know you loved art? Oh, it's when I was a young child. Um, I drew a picture of Superman on my mother's wall. <laughs> And my mother loved it and my father freaked out. How old were you? I was about three, four years old. I was drawing all my life. You're into it? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, you're, you're inspiring young people every day, and we're about to tell a story. And by the way, this book, Surviving the Storm, is about a uh, powerful experience getting through uh, Superstorm Sandy. But let's take a look at uh, the work that our partners at the NGAEA are doing in connection with Classroom Close-Up that tells your story better than we could. Go ahead. This is a comic book that I created called Surviving the Storm. I wrote this during Hurricane Sandy. Uh, it was very traumatic during Hurricane Sandy. We lost power for nine days, and uh, we had to figure out things to do to keep us sane. I needed something as therapy so I can get through the trauma of not having power for nine days and trying to keep my family calm as well. Every day, I'd wake up about 5 o'clock in the morning as soon as the light would come out, and I would sit downstairs in the kitchen by myself, and I would draw out the events that happened the day before. We went downstairs to turn off the alarm and put as much food as we could in the freezer. I found a gas station that was open. The children act out and read the story, and then we have a discussion about what obstacles have they faced in their life. How did they overcome those obstacles? In second grade, I had trouble reading, and so I overcame it by my mom. And from that discussion, it leads into them writing a story with Ms. Faisal about their life and their obstacle. Are you guys excited to do a comic strip? Yeah. yeah. All right. It was something he was inspired about during Hurricane Sandy. It was a real life experience. He wrote it. He introduced it to me. Immediately, I wanted to tie it in with the genre of personal narratives for my students. Eventually, what we're going to do is hone in on the characteristics that he uses and use author's craft, right from Mr. Markman, to create our very own comic. I work with Ms. Faisal, and we comprise a curriculum and a unit dealing with how art is a form of communication and how comic books can promote literacy. And then we've implemented that curriculum into our classrooms, and we've been co-teaching and developing this project. And it's been a wonderful experience for myself, for Ms. Faisal, and for the children, because it's allowed them to express ideas and communicate thoughts in ways that they might not do in a normal setting in an educational environment. My comic strip is about me being bullied in first grade. Um, and it was just nerve-wracking because I couldn't tell anybody because I believe that my comic, unlike any other, would inspire somebody to be bold and stand up for themselves. After I told my story, it actually made me feel better because I know it will set an example for another boy or girl out there. There are many children and people who are lost. They might have a handicap, they might, have, they might be depressed, they might not be a literary person. Their voice is important. They have abilities that may run dormant, but we're trying to help tap into them and bring them out. And I'm gonna make sure they're doing their best to keep creating and being innovators for as long as I have them in my grasp. Then we'll see what happens, but the future looks good today. What's that like for you? It was wonderful. What started out as something personal, that I was doing just to entertain myself and my family became something that moved people and it became a voice for people and it came, became a voice for children. So I felt honored that I was able to give these people that experience and for children to take it and, and let it evolve. Now you've seen this classroom close-up piece many times and you're still moved. Yeah. Even today. Yeah, I mean, as an artist and a teacher, sometimes you work in a vacuum. And not everyone appreciates what you do in either field. 
And art sometimes is, is looked upon as something that's decorative. It's not looked upon as something that can affect major change in the world or in the classroom. Mm. So when it gets exposure, I don't just feel good for me, I feel good for the institution of education because art can propel, the arts can propel education. You believe that? You I know it. it, I know it. How do you know it? I've worked in schools, I've worked in college, I've worked in juvenile institutions, and everywhere I go, I see how self-expression uplifts people. Yeah. Your passion for teaching. A passion for teaching, a passion for creation. Passion for changing kids' lives. Absolutely, they are the future. We have to affect them. They're going to take over one, one day. <laughs> it's going to be their world. <laughs> we got to leave a foundation for them. You know them. you have the gift, right? Well, I'm a humble person. I don't like to say that I have a gift. I, I, I say to that teach. I, I say I'm blessed. Yeah. I'm blessed. Yeah. I like to say that. You're giving a lot to these kids. You keep giving it every day. And uh, you honor us by the work you do every day. And you honor the teaching profession. Thank you. As well as the organization you represent. And uh, anything you want to say to finally all the teachers out there you represent? 30 seconds. Uh, keep on believing what you do. Keep on working hard. We recognize that you work Sundays and while you watch the football <laughs> game. And, and we know what, we, what you do. We appreciate it. And the kids appreciate it, too. In public television, we appreciate public school teachers. How do you create change? By cultivating hope. And we see that every day. In the eyes of our preschoolers, in the souls of the seniors in our adult day program, in the minds of the students at Robert Treat Academy, a national blue ribbon school of excellence, in the passion of children in our youth leadership development program, in our commitment to connections at the Center for Autism, and in the heart of our community, the North Ward Center, creating opportunities for equity, education, and growth. Also brought to you by Holy Name Medical Center in Teaneck, New Jersey. Create and by Seton Hall University.